we are struggling as a country because a lot of attention is not being paid to research. We believe that all our problems should be solved for us uh, by somebody else. Most of these things are done in highly sophisticated laboratories overseas. So if you can sit here within the constraints of our equipment and we're able to come out of this, a little assistance can push us to the level where we can solve all our problems. The university trains people to look for the minerals, to find best ways to extract them, and also to get the mineral as close to its, uh, I would say, 100% value. It is important that the problems of the mining industry, we, we are able to solve it as an institution. And so we needed the manpower to be able to get to grips with some of the challenges of the mining industry. Hence, we had to start the MSc program. The uh, master's program and the PhD program that is done in UMAT here was uh, established because of that purpose, that the mine would just send their problems to the school, and the school would give it to the students, the MSc students, to work on as their research work. The masters, I would say 70-80% of them are already in industry. They use the masters as an opportunity to solve problems. The research topic will normally be framed around some problem on the field. And so there's quite that good industry relationship from that perspective. One exciting area is in the utilization of waste materials into iron making. What we do is simply to get the plastics and then recover what is known as carbon and hydrogen. These are the basic elements that are used in the reduction of iron oxide to produce metallic iron. The exciting thing about this uh, project is that in the conventional way of producing iron from iron oxide, uh, it con the metallurgical coke that is used consists mainly of carbon. And when carbon does the reduction of iron oxide, it produces carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Because hydrogen is also part of the waste plastics, and hydrogen is a faster reductant than carbon, when the reduction takes place, hydrogen is able to react with iron oxide and it produces water vapor instead of the carbon dioxide. So we are able to minimize considerably the amount of carbon dioxide that is generated into the atmosphere. So this technology is said that one, we are able to deal with the plastic minerals. That's the first thing. The second, uh, it offers us a hope as far as our decision to produce our own iron from our own iron oxide resources. Now, this technology can also come in because we have done a lot of work. We have published extensively in the area of bauxite upgrading. What you do is simple. We go through just about the same process as the iron making process. The bauxite then is upgraded. Currently, uh, what we have done so far has revealed that we are able to upgrade the bauxite from about 45% to about 87%, which is a huge improvement. Now, if you were to think of the fact that uh, you buy bauxite from Ghana at $30 per a certain unit, and that same bauxite is being sold at 10 times the original price, then I think it is important that we add value to the bauxite that we produce in Ghana. Because it moves from $30 uh, only through a simple upgrading process, then the $30 will shoot up to $300. And then if somebody were to take it up, because at 80%, it's still not pure alumina. You need to do further work. All this work can be done in Ghana. And we have demonstrated in our lab that even at this simple stage, we are able to convert it from 45 to about 
we have actually established a department of environmental and safety engineering to find means and ways to remediate whatever environmental damage that mining, both large scale and especially small scale mining, is doing to the country. And so we try to see how best we can do away with mercury, for example. So some of our staff have or they have come up with a, a direct smelting method, which United Nations Environment Program, you know, have rated very highly indeed. They've completely taken out mercury from the chain of processing. That is one uh, research that uh, the university have done very successfully. Occasionally, we get funding from industry. It comes, but not in maybe in the manner we expect. If we want to expand, first we want to increase enrollment of PAD students, if we, because that is where the core of the research is done. And then uh, what will enable us to be able to do that is to increase the research equipment we have. And I think this will, have, will call for some funding. I wish we would see more PhD uh, researchers in the geoscience arena. If you have more of them, we'll come to a point where they will see the need for Ghana to process its own mineral resources. In fact, we have a lot of natural resources that are, not, that are untapped, especially from the Volta region. And I want to see that dream fulfilled. I want to see it come to pass where we mine our own gold, diamond, process everything in Ghana here, not to send it or export it somewhere, and then they will bring us the refined one, the refined one, value will be added to it, and we have to buy it back, very expensive. We will go nowhere. But I wish one day, one day, if this desire, Ghana will process its own mineral resources.